Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. We all know someone trashy out there, right? According to Urban Dictionary, a trashy person is someone that lacks class and doesn't really contribute to society. They just sit there decomposing over long periods of time, releasing various chemicals into the air like a bag of trash floating in the ocean. But we might have to change our definition of this type of person based on what some countries have decided to do with trash. Countries like Sweden and France have been burning their trash for a number of years now. And like actual trash and garbage produced by humans, not the anthropomorphized version of trash. This is a way to reduce the use of coal and decrease the amount of things that just sit and decompose in a landfill, much like the dreams of so many trashy people. These waste to energy plants burn this trash to produce heat to produce super pressurized steam to spin turbines that store energy into a generator that's connected to the electric grid. Now, this is not as powerful as coal. It's about one third as powerful as coal, but it also produces way less problematic emissions as a byproduct. Boran Skogland, a representative of one of Sweden's energy companies, estimates that burned trash has about a third the energy pound for pound as burned fossil fuels. Burning that trash means they save space in landfills, don't need to import fossil fuels, and as an added bonus, they cut down on greenhouse so, gas. What are they burning? It's kitchen refuse, bio waste, and commercial garbage. So in Sweden, they're not putting sewage or industrial waste into these machines because they don't want their country to smell like the plague. Europe is pretty sensitive about the plague. In fact, this method of generating energy is so that the earth doesn't have to release another plague to try to end all of us. It's kind of like they're learning from their history. One of the byproducts of burning anything is carbon dioxide. The only exception to this rule is burning time, like trashy people do. When you burn time, the only byproducts are resentment and rage-filled nostalgia. And yes, burning trash will produce CO2, but this is CO2 that's a part of the current carbon cycle. It's like us breathing out carbon dioxide. That's supposed to be there. If all CO2 was a problem, you'd see climate activists against exhaling, which is counterproductive to life. The CO2 produced by fossil fuels is not part of this current carbon cycle. It's from a million years ago. That's why the Earth buried it. All right. Stop right there because I know exactly what you all just yelled at your computer screens. Julian, burning anything is going to create CO2. And yeah, you're right. But like a Swedish police drama, it's all very nuanced. On the face of it, burning garbage actually looks less favorable than coal or natural gas in terms of CO2 production. According to the EPA, flaming trash creates 2,988 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. For the same power, coal makes 2,249 pounds of CO2 and natural gas makes 1,135 pounds. That doesn't sound good until you consider that a lot of the CO2 released by burning trash is from stuff that was part of the Earth's carbon cycle. It's carbon that was in the air not too long ago and would be returning there again, whereas the carbon released from burning fossil fuels was out of the carbon cycle for millions of years, sequestered away deep underground. So the EPA considers the CO2 impact of burning waste to be about a third as bad as- It's like the Earth's savings account of carbon, and we're like the shitty kid that doesn't really know what to do with their life, so they just keep switching majors all the time and burn through all of that savings. I mean, the Earth had dreams, and it was to have a species in charge of the planet that would sustain it and not recklessly beat the shit out of itself. The piles of plastic in the ocean are the equivalent of piles of laundry everywhere, but it would be like if the laundry choked out the family dog and all of the neighborhood pets. Another byproduct of anything burned is ash. A byproduct of this process is ash. Every year, 80,000 tons of ash from this plant is mixed with concrete used to pave roads and sidewalks all over Paris. 
This ash contains heavy metals like cadmium, aluminum, iron, maiden, and Judas Priest. But France uses ash to mix into cement and pave roads with it. And it's like that classic old Aussie song. Reduce, reuse, recycle! It is one of his less popular songs, but it's in the deep cuts of the Black Sabbath collection. You really gotta dig around to look in there for it, but it's there. The biggest issue is flue gases, which are the big puffs of smoke that are pumped out of the smokestacks that cause major issues within the environment. They produce dioxins, which can be poisonous to, um, well, life, life, just all of life. But that's why you see large smokestacks on these facilities, right? They're fixed with filters and they're cleaned regularly to maintain regulated standards. Flue gases are also burned at 850 degrees Celsius. Currently, Sweden is at 50% of the accepted emissions, so they're doing pretty okay. All incineration of waste must be done in a proper manner. We are at half of the levels that are actually permitted, so we are far below the emission levels that the authorities has demanded from us. And things are so crazy with the idea of burning trash that other countries are exporting their trash to Sweden. This should be alarming to a lot of these countries, right? This means that there's too much trash in Europe and there's one country burning all of it. It's a business. We import approximately 800,000 tons uh, yearly. We sell a service. It's mainly uh, Norway, the UK, Ireland, Italy. What we have here is uh, imported uh, English household waste. Each one of these weighs about uh, 700 kilos, which corresponds to 200, 250 kilos of fuel, oil in energy terms. So there's a lot of energy here. Sweden is working hard to reduce or at least maintain the effects of climate change so we don't burn up. The planet might think of us as trash and one day burn us up for energy to restore itself with. We should probably not let it get that bad. Sweden is also burning H&M clothing. As of 2017, they have 15 tons of hipster attire that is being burned for energy. The concern is not just making sure no moldy clothes get burned, but also to ensure that the, these clothes have the least amount of pretension acceptable by law. The reason why H&M clothing winds up as trash isn't because of quality, but it's because of price. Since it's cheaper, it's perfect for burning, so it's basically the trashy people of clothing. Currently, with the popularity of this plan, Dubai is planning on building the largest waste energy plant in the world. This is to compete with China's waste to energy plant that plans on burning over 5,000 tons of waste to generate electricity and create renewable energy for solar panels. And if the pattern of things continue, that means that America will be starting a war over garbage in the next decade. And this is going to give a whole new meaning to the term dirty bomb. So why hasn't America adopted this solution? Sure, in the States, we have a harsh contempt for the French. We did, like Since we decided to rebrand French fries to freedom fries, just to stick it in their dumb, brie-filled faces. But we love the Swedes. Those are the immigrants America wants to come in here. Those are the white people that it's okay to steal from because that's how socialism works in the minds of nationalistic ignorance. The truth is, America has, but it's gone some pretty heavy controversy. In Boston, the Wheelabrator Waste to Energy plant is causing some issues. Democratic Representative Rosalie Vincent is against this plant because of all the byproducts this plant generates, from heavy metals and ash that's dumped into adjacent landfills. This plant should be called a waste to energy to waste plant. That redundancy is is beautifully American.
And this is the major difference between the European plants, which aren't perfect, but they are taking precautions against this kind of environmental attack. The waste to energy plants in Europe are regulated. And when you bring that word up in America, people think their precious freedoms are in danger. In America, deregulation means the freedom to be ignorant and misinformed, the freedom to do things half-assed and have full-assed pride in it, the freedom to believe that profit over people will mean that everyone gets rich. Everyone getting rich while we're all suffocated by the air we poisoned means nothing. We are literally choking on the desires of monetary richness. Wheelabrator plant was supposed to be closed after the landfill was filled, but they filed for a five-year extension. And Wheelabrator is one of two unlined landfills in the state of Massachusetts. And when they have spills that affect the wildlife in the area, they are willing to pay for the fine rather than fix the problem. Which is like putting a band-aid on your herpes. I think the next time Wheelabrator causes a spill, they should have to turn their ash into cash and give it back to the communities that they are destroying. Or they can give up like two-thirds of their annual income instead of a slap on the wrist of a few million dollars out of the billions of dollars they make. Let's get serious about environmental problems in America. These spills have been so bad that the shellfish is too contaminated for human consumption, which means Boston is about to lose its clam chowder, and there will be no food for them to contribute to the culinary landscape of America. Maybe Willowbrader will sell some poisoned clam chowder under its new name, Freedom Chowder. Now, this plant has caused cancer, respiratory problems, and... The studies are claiming there is no underlying causes, which means there's a lot of scientists that are part of this study that are exercising their freedom to be lazy. And also corporate chills. This plant has caused a lot of divide because the people on its side are claiming they've done a lot of good for the community. They're donating to schools, contributed about 60 full-time jobs, and massive amounts of money in taxes. This basically means Wheelabrator is holding these people hostage under the guise of money, employment, and creating rarities in wildlife. Their acts of charity are clouding these citizens from the actual clouds of poison destroying their life. Maybe that's what it is. In order for profit over people to make sense, your air and water has to have so many toxins in it that it's rotting you from the inside. To decrease your brain function so the only freedoms you can think about is breaking free from the shackles of the corporate thumb by playing the game and making money. Since that's the only thing life is about according to the purveyors of trash like Wheelabrator. The solution to this is pretty simple. Uh, the byproducts have to be recycled and uh, don't build plants that put toxins into the air next to cities and towns. Oh, and don't build them next to a river because it'll poison that too. But that's regulation and if we have that then Russia will win and they'll get all of our trash and then we're going to be left with only all of the trashy people. Look. If you're worried about regulations, understand this. We wouldn't need to regulate these things if we chose to be intelligent and realize our actions have consequences. So piling ash and not lining a factory that burns trash is illogical and leads to bad things. If we didn't do those things, we wouldn't have to regulate that. Corporations are like that kid that keeps shitting in the urinal. And now we have to have a rule that instates that you shouldn't shit in urinals. Regulations hit you in the face with logical rules because we have the freedom to be illogical and think that's okay. And there's proof that sometimes using legislation to force people to act logically is necessary and helpful. 
San Francisco passed unpopular legislation to banning plastic bags and increasing composting. That's decreased landfill trash by 80% as of 2015. They made it mandatory for households and apartments to compost and grocery stores to get rid of plastic bags. And look, I know, I know what some of you out there are going to say, but Chris, this kind of sounds like Nazi Germany. Sure. If Nazi Germany was about exterminating the extinction of our species instead of exterminating the Jews. So basically, it's not like Nazi Germany at all. We have to accept the consequences of unbridled freedom. For us to progress and be less wasteful, we have to think about what our actions actually mean. We figured out that burning trash means we get to kill, nay, slaughter two birds with one stone. But we have to take precautions against the revolt of the birds. We have the right to intelligence and morality. Just because a corporation destroys your land but gives you prettily wrapped gifts doesn't mean they get to keep causing problems. That's the freedom of accepting chaos. With unregulated corporations taking ideas from countries that have regulated progress so profit doesn't shit all over it, America is falling behind. With our hubris, we're probably going to wind up producing the most trash, and since we'll be arguing about false charities, Sweden, France, Dubai, China, and a litany of other countries will be making tons of money off of our trash and war scraps. One day, maybe we can get to a point where we trade in our drones for trash so we can burn them for a form of free energy. Maybe then we can realize that our idea of consequence-free freedom is limiting. Regulation isn't bad when it helps us move forward in society that produces more solutions than garbage. And in that case, we should be calling these trashy people corporatists. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and give us a share. Sharing is caring, so you can share it with your friends or your enemies. Uh, sharing helps independent media like this spread around and reach more people. Uh, I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, for my entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can pick up a copy of my live stand-up comedy albums available on Bandcamp. And if you go to the Bandcamp page, you can also subscribe to get new and exclusive unreleased stand-up comedy material every single month for just a few shekels. Uh, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, and if you want to continue helping the show fi with financial support, uh, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, the major goal of the Patreon is to help build a community surrounding these big ideas. So uh, you can go and check out all the details, all the videos, all the podcasts at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, and if you can't donate, that's completely okay. All of my content will be available for free. Uh, you can donate a little, donate a lot, or donate uh, nothing at all. Uh, but a great way to help the show is always to share. Uh, so again, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, or for all the other details and tour schedules and all that fun stuff, you can go to my website, which is ramennoodlescomedy.com. But till then, thanks for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.